Welcome to the continuation of our Compass Module M5 Urban Planning and Participatory Planning. The three sector theory is an economic theory which divides economies into three sectors of activity. Extraction of raw materials is the primary sector, manufacturing is the secondary, and services is the tertiary. It was developed by Alan Fisher, Colin Clark and Jean Fourastier. So the primary sector involves the retrieval and production of raw materials, such as corn, coal, wood and iron. A coal miner and a fisherman would be workers in the primary sector. The secondary sector involves the transformation of raw or intermediate materials into goods, e.g. manufacturing steel into cars or textiles into clothing. A builder and a dressmaker would be workers in the secondary sector. At least, the tertiary sector involves the supplying of services to consumers and businesses, such as babysitting, cinema and banking. A shopkeeper and an accountant would be workers in the tertiary sector. In the 20th century, economists began to suggest that traditional tertiary services could be further distinguished from quaternary and quinary service sectors. Many European cities have undergone the same development. During the recent decades, a demographic change occurred. Stagnation or decline of population, production went to low-wage countries, industrial cities changed into cities of commerce and services, more or less successful. Often the results have been abandoned spaces, houses and industrial complexes. Also the political changes in the 1990s provided open areas like former military complexes or, in the case of Berlin, no longer used border facilities like the Mauerstreifen. Now then, we found some causes for the emergence of abandoned places. But how about social and cultural changes related to our module? In 1968, the Club of Rome was founded. It was, and still is, a think tank which describes itself as a group of world citizens sharing a common concern for the future of humanity. The same year the world faced an escalation of social conflicts, the so-called protests of 1968. It was characterized by popular rebellions against military and bureaucratic elites. Many of those protestants picked up the ideas of the Club of Rome and took up a position for environmental topics. In the 1970s, protests against nuclear power stations started. Out of this movement, the Green Party was founded in Germany in 1980. The politic of this party had a big influence on the environmental point of view of the whole society and as well on the traditional political parties. The term sustainability became more important and found its way into modern urban planning. So as well in Germany, which is known for its affinity to laws, orders, directives and administrative rules. The list is endless, also concerning the conversion sector. The most important directive in German planning is called Bauleitplanung, which is a term difficult to translate in English, maybe urban land use planning. The Bauleitplanung 
is matter of the municipal administrations and is part of the Baugesetzbuch. It comprises the Flächennutzungsplan and the Bebauungsplan, which are two different levels of land use planning. Of vital importance are the integration of landscaping and the preservation of nature. Also important is the public participation. So, how about in your country? And for German participants, please add further information. So now we're at the end of the second lecture. To provide further insights of this topic, please click on the link below and read Encyclopedia Britannica, Urban Planning. And maybe the next video will be also very, very helpful. And in addition, maybe the next video will be also very helpful, so don't hesitate to click on the link above.